are now listening to The Perfect Prana with Kaya Ann. What's poppin'? What's good? You're listening to The Perfect Prana show on 88.1 FM WCRX Saturdays at 10 a.m. Sundays at 9 a.m. I'm Kaya Ann, your host and a yoga enthusiast. If you love yoga, this is the perfect place to be. And if you do not love yoga, this is still the perfect place to be because I have a great show up for you guys today. Of course, the yoga news where I speak about what's going on in the world, how it relates to yoga, Yoga Hills, where I bring on a very special guest and the weekly wellness challenge where I have been following the eight limbs of yoga. But before we get into all of that, let's center ourselves. Let's take this moment to go inward. Just calm down for a minute relax our nervous system so no matter where you're at no matter what you're doing you're at the park you're driving your car you're laying in bed you're sitting on the couch no matter where you're at go ahead and take this moment to lengthen out your spine create a nice line of energy from your tailbone to your crown you're standing stand up nice and tall if you're sitting just come onto your sit bones and if you're laying down lay your back fully onto the surface your lower back, your middle back, your upper back, so breath can effortlessly move through you. Begin to notice your breath. What is your breath doing? Where is it going? And then take your last breath of your own and exhale, completely pushing out all the air. And then with me, take a nice, smooth inhale through your nose, filling up all the way. And then exhale with that loud sigh, like, Emptying completely, inhale through your nose, right into your belly, pass through your rib cage, into your chest, and hold. And then exhale with that loud sigh, like (sighs) Inhale through your nose, filling up your belly like a balloon, and hold at the top. And then exhale, (sighs) deflating your belly pushing out all the breath and hold at the bottom. Inhale through your nose, right into your belly, past your rib cage, up to your chest. And then exhale, sigh it out, (sighs) emptying out your belly completely, emptying out the breath. Let your breath come back to a steady rhythm. I am centered. Let's get on with the show, Yoga News. So this week I discovered something that I wasn't expecting, Naked Yoga. Montana Studio touts the benefits of Naked Yoga. This is actually a pretty old article, but I just came across it and I was like, naked yoga? Like people go to classes and practice yoga naked? Like what? (laughs) Like why? Apparently this is supposed to be great for boosting body confidence, building community and releasing trauma from the body. I can, I guess I can understand practicing yoga naked like if you want to do that alone but going to a studio to practice yoga naked is crazy like with other people around like why why do I I don't want to say you know I I don't want to say never say never but in this case I'm going to say never I'm never going to go to a naked yoga class because if somebody farts I'm suing. <laughs> I already hate going to a yoga class where people are farting because I'm like, oh my gosh. But you know, I will say that I've had people fart in my class and I feel like it's a compliment because it's like, okay, I got you so relaxed that you release gas, like pat on my back. But no, seriously, like, no, I don't want to go to a naked yoga class. That's interesting no judgment on them because it's not meant to be a sexual thing they say like don't sexualize people don't judge people that go to this it's just crazy that that is a way that people like to build community personally i don't want to be around anybody naked that 
I'm not romantic with at this point in my life. Like, I don't need to be naked around people. <laughs> Partially, practically, just like for sanitation reasons, like clothes are nice. And I don't know, that's just extremely vulnerable. Even being naked in a locker room, even around just a bunch of women, it's a little uncomfortable for me. I don't know what the correct answer is to building confidence and high self-esteem and releasing trauma and improving body image. Like, I, I don't have the answers. Like, I'm trying what I try and seeing what works for me, but something different might work for somebody else so who knows some people like going to a nudist beach because of that same freeing feeling yeah i think there are benefits to being naked sometimes and just being comfortable with your body like everybody knows about the the study that was put out about sleeping naked and how that might be good for your health but i do think it is important to sometimes to just be in your body, but for me personally, in my own privacy is when I like that the most. But I will say, you know what I feel like has been really healing for my issues with my body and how uncomfortable I am in my body is practicing yoga alone. And maybe not necessarily naked, but just practicing alone because I can look as stupid as I want. And then also, I can just breathe fully. I notice sometimes when I'm in public or when I'm around a lot of people, I have the strong urge to suck my belly in, which is restrictive to my breathing. I'm always in this constant state of sucking in, which is not good for your health. Don't do that. It's not good for your health. I've heard it could cause issues with your pelvic floor and Again, it, you just, it doesn't allow you to get a full breath. So I will say at home, I'm more inclined to just let my belly go completely. And it's something I'm always kind of reminding myself, like, let it go. You don't have to suck it in. I literally just did it right now as I'm talking. Like, I literally was like, let my belly go. Like, I don't have to suck in, you know. I don't have to suck in in front of people. That's just my own insecurities and shame. But I definitely don't have to do it when I'm alone because it's like, nobody's around like the only person judging myself is me so like what it you know just let it go breathe breathe into your belly let it go fully relax man being perceived is so exhausting <laughs> but i'm so grateful for practices like yoga because it does take that perception away which we will get into that at the end of the episode and the weekly wellness challenge but yeah just so yeah tell me if you would go to a naked yoga class you can tell me on instagram at consistently kaya consistently spelled with a k kaya spelled k-y-a-h i will not judge you i promise like maybe i will practice clothless yoga at home but with people i don't need to do that I don't need to be around a bunch of people naked. If that helps you build confidence or helps um, your self-image issues, I honestly want to talk to people that practice naked yoga or like go to a naked yoga class or even nudist beach. Like why? Like what about it is, what is, what, what is this? Like I, I have questions for some of those people just out of genuine curiosity. Yoga Heels. This week's Yoga Heels. It's a little bit different this week because I am bringing on Dion Milton, who is a breathwork facilitator, an artist, an educator, and the co founder of the Healing Academy, a nonprofit organization that is working to transform urban communities through education. Education about emotional maturity, the importance of African American history, and in helping individuals cultivate their artistic self. So I had a conversation with Dion about 
this organization and what they do for the community and how we can get involved. Thank you so much for coming on to the Perfect Prana Show to talk about the Healing Academy. I'm so happy and blessed that you are here with me today. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you for asking me to join you. I read that there are six pillars for your mission and areas that you all are focusing on. Could you talk about those six pillars and how you guys address each one of those pillars? Absolutely. So we have six pillars that we focus on, as you mentioned. Literacy is where it was born. Um, Some people may know or may not know that the literacy rate of Chicago is pretty low. In middle school, about 12 to 16 percent, I can't remember the exact number, are reading on level and doing math on level. So that means the rest of the kids are not. And that means um, also that once Chicagoans become adult, about 53 percent, somewhere around there, can actually read, you know, and on an acceptable level, which is that third grade level. So literacy is something we are passionate about. That means we're doing all types of um, social emotional literacy, all types of financial literacy, also just learning how to read literacy. And that takes form in different ways. History is one of our pillars because it's important to know where we came from, to know where we're going. Let me scratch that. It's important to know where we came from, to understand where we are so that we can know where we're going. And so history is kind of one of our grounding pillars, health, and that's physical and mental health, because some people, you know, think they're not, they're not connected or not the same, but they're very, very much so intertwined. And we like to address both elements of health. Then, of course, we have to talk about social emotional learning, which is also a part of health, but also more in the mental space in which we're paying close attention to how are people learning about themselves, how they're learning about the world around them, how they're adapting and being involved with the world around them. We really, really want to understand social emotional learning for that reason. And then spirituality is important to us because it's important to ground ourselves in the things You know, even there's going to be things that are the unknown, right? Even in science where there's supposed to be facts, there's a lot of space of, well, it just is what it is. (laughs) It's like, okay, well, we're having faith in your science. (laughs) There's even spiritual elements in science. So we believe that everybody has their own spiritual practice. There's no one way for, you know what I mean? Like it's, everybody has their spiritual practice. So there's no like, oh, you have to be Christian or Muslim or anything else that might be out there. No, everybody is accepted as they are, as long as you believe that life exists. If we can agree to that, we're good. Um, visual and performing art is the the thing that actually brought the three co-founders together. We were all artists, both visual and performing artists. And we have identified the, the healing properties in art in ourselves So that's something that we want to share with the world around us. Um, Myself, I am the founder or the creator of the Therapeutic Art Box, in which you walk through your chakras, your body, your mind with creative experiences. So that in a nutshell is our six pillars, social, emotional learning, literacy, history, spirituality, visual and performing art and health and We address those things in so many different ways from workshops to after-school programs to panel discussions to uh, community events and fairs as well. It's obvious that there is a need for all of these pillars to be learned beyond school. So how do you reach the people in need of your services and just of these six pillars? Well, we do a lot of partnering um, with many different organizations from the Chicago Public Schools to the Chicago Park District to the Chicago Police Department. We partner, 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 um, because we understand that, one, we can't do all of this by ourselves (laughs) a lot. And two, there's many, many organizations out there doing the work as well. So why not work together on these very large scale problems that are affecting us in various ways? So we just do a lot, a lot, a lot of partnering, and that tends to bring us to a bunch of people, uh, create a large audience for us, as well as for those folks who are partnering with us, they 
expose their services and products to our community as well. Could you talk a little bit about more anecdotal stories or situations where you've seen how this organization has impacted the community? Oh, yes. One of my favorite stories. Well, I have two. I'll tell my favorite story and then I'll tell a recent story. One of my favorite stories is when we were doing an after school program at Art in Motion, we were offering our therapeutic arts program in which the students, like I mentioned, walk through the different spaces of their lives in which they may have experienced stressful things and then they practice some activities to heal. So one young lady, um, at the same time, I was a full-time teacher at that school. So I saw this child during the day, all day, all school year. And during that school year, she was really reclusive. I'm talking a hood on her head, all wrapped up in the corner, same hoodie every day. You know, when she did take her hoodie off, you can tell there was low maintenance on like self-care and things like that. So I'm like, you know, I tried different ways, but being in a classroom with 30 plus kids, it was really, really difficult to target her. And especially because she was so quiet and there were so many loud ones around. (laughs) Those are the ones, the quiet ones tend to be the ones that slip through the crack. Well, I had the blessing and honor of being able to do this after school program in which myself and another teacher, um, he actually led most of the class, but I had the opportunity to observe. And over time, she just came out of her shell and she started to talk more. And then being her science teacher during the day, I saw her shifting in the classroom, getting more involved in class, answering questions, raising her hand. And this is all after having experienced this after school program to the point where towards the end of the year, she had clothes that fit her on and she had started to care about her appearance and caring about her hair and taking care of her body. And I, I, to this day, that one story is the one that moves me that this young lady went through the whole school year, really reclusive. And all it took was one after school program for her to come out of her shell and speak up for herself. Cause at, at the end of it, she was speaking up for herself, telling people what was right and wrong morally. I was like, Whoa, <laughs> this is a complete turnaround. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite story. No, that's amazing progress. And it is important that we can help as many people come out because you just never know what they have to offer or who they'll be one day. And if we're constantly like stuck in our shell, then how can we share that with the world? Or one of my next questions for you is just about what you envision for this organization and for the community within the next couple of years? Well, we're definitely shifting the culture around healing. Uh, What that means is like a lot, uh, there's so much stigma around like mental health in the Black community. There's so much stigma and that is shifting. That is definitely shifting, especially with the younger generations coming in. But there's so much stigma even still around going to the doctor, right? And going to the dentist, (laughs) like all these things. So We're really, really through education and are hoping to shift uh, people's mindset, even thinking about policy changes and how schools are even set up. Our idea is that we can uh, provide an alternative to the public school system because, as we know, it is not serving all of our kids equitably. We also know that in addition to the schools failing our kids, there are supports that their parents need. So basically over the next few years, our goal is to increase the amount of children that we're serving, as well as increasing the interactions with their parents and serving their parents. And what that looks like is providing enrichment to homeschoolers, in addition to serving more Chicago public schools, in addition to making sure that we have touch points with the parents of those students. We definitely uh, are going to be doing (laughs) a lot of capacity building for that reason, because what we find is that it's a lot of work. Point blank, that's it. There's just, it's just a lot of work and we can have all the apps and all the different things in place. At the end of the day, certain things need a human touch and we need to have the capacity to carry the load. So at that time, that's the vision I see. I see the Healing Academy expanding to having more um, outreach, having, um, people in place for development director, because also with this organization still being fairly young, 
the board and myself, we do most of the workload. Um, we bring in guest instructors and things like that from time to time, but for the most part, we carry the load. So at this point, we're looking to expand in order to reach more people, to organize and, and partner with more organizations and to provide these services to more people. How can people get involved with your organization and okay. they're a part of the community? There are so many ways. So we're always looking for volunteers for the various things that we do. We have lots of events. If you follow us at We Heal Heal, that's we, W-E-H-E-A-L, H-E-A-L. So if you follow us at We Heal Heal, you can find out more about the things that we're doing. If you visit our website, wehealheal.org, you can find out more about the things that we're doing. If you're an artist, we have a gala coming up this year. You can submit your artwork to the gala. I do believe that application is live, but if it's not, reach out to us and we'll make sure you get it. Um, you can do donate your time. You can donate your funds. You can donate anything like learning materials. If you want to get involved, you can reach out to us at We Heal Heal Everywhere. That's We Heal Heal at Gmail, We Heal Heal dot org, and at We Heal Heal on Instagram and on Facebook. Volunteers, donations, board members, instructors, development directors, outreach directors. These are the folks we're looking for. Yes, I'll make sure to put your website and your socials in the show notes. Um, before we go, I'm going to ask you to lead us through a uh, pranayama. All right. Well, I like to give people some disclaimers. If you are able to sit, sit up nice and straight with your feet flat on the floor. And if you can roll your shoulders back. Up and back, bringing your heart forward and allowing your spine to support you and being straight. If you can, close your eyes, feel free to. But if you can't close your eyes, just allow the gaze to be relaxed, not staring at any one thing in particular. We're going to start by taking three clearing breaths that's in through the nose, out audibly through the mouth, like so. Two more. Now allow your breath to return to its natural state, breathing in through the nose, out through the nose. And as you're breathing, bring your awareness to the area right beneath the nostrils. Pay attention to the air when you inhale as it travels through the nostrils. Experience the sensation of the warm breath as the air exits the nostrils. Experience the sensation of the cool air as the air enters the nostrils. Feel the air entering and exiting the body as it brushes gently over the top of your lip. Pay attention to any sensations you feel around the nose, beneath the nostrils. Just allow yourself to breathe for a few minutes. If you feel your mind wandering, bring it back gently to the breath as it enters and exits the body. Allowing your body to relax, let us do a quick scan of the body starting at the crown of the head. Pay close attention to any sensations you feel as you move from the crown of your head down, down, down your body. Make no effort to adjust or correct anything. Just observe being aware of any sensations, any warmth of your clothing, any coolness of the air coming in contact with your skin. 
Paying close attention, move your awareness down your body, down your chest, your back, down, down, down to the soles of your feet. Start to move your awareness back up the body, back through the body, up, up, up. Gently following all the parts of the body, from the knees to the hips, to the lower back, to the abdomen. Paying close attention to any sensations you feel, move your awareness all the way back to the crown of your head. Taking a few breaths, in through the nostrils, out through the nostrils. When you're ready to come back, start to wiggle the toes and the fingers and blink your eyes open. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You have me so still <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dion, for coming on my show. With that being said, namaste. Namaste. You're listening to The Perfect Prana Show on 88.1 FM WCRX, Saturdays at 10 a.m., Sundays at 9 a.m. Also available on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube where I post extended versions. Weekly Wellness Challenge. Last week's challenge, Prana Yama, and I challenged myself and everybody else to practice a different pranayama each day and i also challenged myself to post a pranayama of the day monday through friday did i do that i missed thursday i'm not gonna lie i missed posting the pranayama for thursday and i don't even think i practiced anything thursday i'm being honest it's not very yogi of me but i'm being completely honest i totally neglected that on thursday whatever monday tuesday wednesday and friday i did it though so <laughs> this week's wellness challenge of course i've been following the eight limbs of yoga and we are on pratyahara which is sensory withdrawal withdrawing from senses and this is hard as we are in a world full of things to perceive and take in constantly. I'm in a constant state of perception. I'm in a constant state of stimulus. There's always something to perceive, to entertain me, to watch, to listen to, to taste, to hear, to see. It's always something. So maybe it's good to withdraw from the senses sometimes to be a little bit more simple in what we're doing as withdrawing from the senses sometimes can make you appreciate the sense more like if you go some time without tasting anything when you do taste something it's phenomenal versus if you're tasting something all the time you might not be able to appreciate it as much Happiness can't exist without sadness. Excitement can't exist without boredom. And so on. I don't know. This week's challenge. Okay, so y'all, I have some habits on me. I be on my phone watching stuff in bed before I go to sleep. If I ever do go to sleep. <laughs> Again, not very yogi of me. I, I, I confess my faults. Anyways, I would like to practice this before I go to bed or at least when I get into bed. Normally when I get into bed, I'm on my phone watching something. I'd say for five minutes when I get into bed, just lay down. I'm not gonna fall asleep, but I'm just gonna lay down, close my eyes and just be in silence for five minutes and just withdraw from the senses withdraw from the show that I'm watching or my phone or if I'm talking on the phone withdraw from that just to turn my attention inward and maybe this will help me sleep better because it's a serious issue I'll report back to you but I'm gonna do this every single night when I get into bed 
then I can go back to whatever I was doing before if I desire that. But you know, delay don't deny, right? Anyways, it's been lovely talking with everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You're listening to The Perfect Pana Show on 88.1 FM WCRX, Saturdays at 10 a.m., Sundays at 9 a.m., also available on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube, where I post extended versions. Before I go, let me leave you with a quote. I've been waiting for this moment. I took a picture of my kombucha bottle because I was like, okay, I'm going to use this for my quote. (laughs) And Andrew Pyle Plummer, some guy in Omaha, Nebraska, said, If you live your life loving yourself and others, you can never go wrong. That's the words of enlightenment for the week. With that being said, the divine in me bows to the divine in you. Namaste.